Now, before we get started, I want to share an exciting opportunity with you all about how you can learn Web3 for free, even if you have no prior knowledge about Web3. Start building Web3 projects and also become a part of the global community of learners. Simply go to Ryzen.com. As you can see, they also have some amazing partners such as Solana and BNB Chain. They have free Web3 bootcamps where you can learn how to build on BNB Chain, Solana, and many other Web3 ecosystems. And you will also get support from Ryzen instructors and community members. They have launched a new BNB Chain Bootcamp where they will be giving grants worth up to $2,500 to the top performers in the bootcamp. Simply go to the link in the description below and apply to this free bootcamp to get started today. The application deadline, as you can see, is September 1st for Cohort 4. Good luck. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and the new video and in this video I'm answering one of the most asked questions that I get from students is how do you how do you balance uh, quality studies, development, data structures, algorithms and all sorts of things together. So one thing I want you to realize is uh, point number one which is an important one, college studies are not a waste of time. I know sometimes you may get into a college where you don't feel like you're learning enough things be that you don't like the way the professor is teaching you and sometimes I have seen that like some professors don't know how to teach uh, even though they may have like all the PhDs and everything but they fail in uh, grasping the attention of the student and they're just teaching for the sake of teaching. If you want a real world example of this go to nptel.com you will find some of the most boring lectures over there by some of the most smartest people in India. So there's nothing wrong with that like teaching it's a very different sort of a skill it doesn't really mean that if you are good at a particular topic you're going to be great at teaching um, again I'm not pointing any fingers like I'm not naming anything specific but if you find yourself in a place because I know students do and if you can relate to it then you know you are that type of a student that okay in college whatever they're teaching us we're not really engaging in it we're not learning something new it, they're just doing it for the sake of teaching. So if you're in this scenario, I want you to realize that even though in college you may not be getting that much value, but still if you're doing computer science and engineering, especially especially in India, the subjects that you have are very important. It's going to help you in your career. So, For example, like compiler design, networking, data structures algorithm, database management systems, operating systems. These are all, you know, subjects in computer science, BTEC or whatever other courses you will be doing in your bachelor's or master's. These are important. So point number one is make sure you don't skip these subjects. Now when we talk about college and balancing college with um, other stuff that you do, I'll talk about other stuff later on, but let me first answer the balancing college part. So the step, uh, other, another point I want to mention over here is exams. So your exams and your assignments and all these other things, I'd recommend two things. So first is the college subjects that are important to you in your career. There are two types of subjects in computer science in BTEC in India. One which are really important, like the ones I just mentioned. One that are not very important and are waste of time. So for example, metallurgy, chemistry. You're not going to use that when you're coding. You know, in no job in computer science, you're going to use metallurgy. So ideally for these sort of a subjects, I'll recommend just pass. Try to do popular questions, write anything or something like just try to pass. Try not to get back. Give some mock tests and try things like that. So just your priority focus should be passing, not getting the highest grade. And for subjects that are important to you, learn with passion. And it's not like, so when I was in university, I was not like, oh, database, op database management, like DBMS, operating system, these subjects are going to be in my sixth semester. So I'll, I will learn these subjects in sixth semester. No, I learned these subjects in like second semester itself because I was interested in it. So try to develop that interest and when then you give exams, your grades will be better because you're really passionate about it. So every college has a different, you know, grading criteria or whatever. So try to learn how your college grades papers and try to make the most out of it. That was about balancing college. Now regarding an assignments and stuff uh, for practical files and everything, I'd recommend do some jugad. Try to give your parents these tasks. If your mom is a housewife, like my mom, uh, and you can be like, mom, can you just write, write it down or you can pay someone else. Uh, to do it for you. Uh, you can do all sorts of jugards. I'd recommend saving times in such wasteful things. These wasteful things include sometimes people they ask you to just copy paste whatever is written in a printed material into your notebook. Sometimes people even ask you to write code in a notebook. Hundreds and hundreds of pages. Please don't do it. 
waste of time and uh, i'd recommend uh, giving the outsourcing this to someone else maybe someone in your relatives or someone who can help you and uh, it's really not a not at all beneficial and uh, try to eliminate such things now balancing another now second another point is which is most important and the most curious one and where people struggle with most is attendance so 75% attendance i've made a video on this in my hindi channel you can check it out how to balance 75% attendance i'd recommend two things thing number one is proxy like you can have proxy or you can try to maintain try to think of 75% attendance as glass full by 3 by 4 so even though you have 75% mandatory attendance you also have 25% flexibility like 25% you can take leaves try to take those leaves in such a way that you get the entire day off you know so let's say you have a metallurgy lecture on monday and you have a metallurgy lecture on friday and on monday you have five other lectures and on friday you have only two other lectures so you will skip metallurgy lecture on monday or friday you will skip it on friday you will try to delegate and skip all the lectures on friday so that you get the entire friday off and then you can do your studies and you have your weekend by yourself as well uh, so you can do that try to again it depends on college to college so try to find these jugards in hindi we say uh, sometimes you can get involved in some te- technical societies that give you flexibility or attendance and stuff like that so proxy finding jugards and making use of like taking it in an optimistic approach of the 25% criteria like okay you have 25% you have free one more thing i'd recommend for balancing this attendance thing is um try to wake up early and go to bed earlier so most people they burn the midnight oil in the end see you can do whatever you want i'm not judging anyone i used to do it as well burning the midnight oil coding uh, very late and waking up very late or not prioritizing my health i don't think it's not it's worth it ideally i would say just try it for two three weeks or one month at least try it for one month wake up at 4 am and sleep at 8 pm 8 hours of sleep wake up at 4 am freshen up then you have all the time in the morning that you can practice now balancing data structures and development so in the morning you can practice data structures algorithms then when you are at college you are attending your lectures or whatever if you see a useless lecture that you are attending in that useless lecture you can just sit and you can study on your own thing that is what i used to do that's another jugaad for you and then uh, you get to home uh, let's say by noon you do your food and stuff you have the evening with you you can take some rest go play outside some games and uh, sometimes you can go for parties you can take some some days off that is also fine but most days you can spend the evening doing your development work and all sorts of things as well so that's another way i mentioned how you can balance these things so dsa is sorted dsa is sorted okay dsa is not data structures algorithms meaning practicing lead code for your interviews that is not a worry at all because that you can wake up at 4 am till 5 6 am you will be free um and then in the morning you can practice for 2 3 hours or 4 hours and on weekends you can practice for 4 hours in the morning 5 hours as much as you want then you have your entire day free in that entire day you will either attend college or you will either do development or contribute to open source or do whatever you want so your only worry right now is how to balance development and college okay your worry is not how to balance data structures algorithms data structures algorithms you are doing in the morning because you are waking up at 4 am your problem your concern now is how to balance please try to understand this your worry now is how to balance development and college not data structures algorithms college and development no data structures algorithm is sorted waking up at 4 am doing dsa in the morning 2 3 hours now your problem is how to balance college and development that is easy okay do college related activities now extra curriculum try to expand stuff outside of university as well so like go to events network with people take part in hackathons go to conferences um do community work all sorts of things apply whatever you're learning in open source ways or whatever you want to do right so lastly i'll just say you have the time even if you have 75% attendance criteria your problem was dsa development college now your problem is reduced to development and college i think that's not that difficult you can balance development and college together even if you have 75% attendance criteria 
and the solution for that is make a timetable. Speaking of learning in public, one of the ways you can maintain consistency is by writing blogs, starting your personal newsletter. Starting a technical blog is one of the best things you can do for your career as a student. Literally, it converts into job opportunities. You will find plenty of examples on Twitter. You can check it out. And by maintaining consistency, you can take part in the monthly We Make Devs blogging challenges. I will leave this in the, com in the description below. You can win some exciting prizes. Like this month, we are giving away a gaming monitor. And uh, you have to write about, let's say, technical writing and all sorts of things. How to take part. All the steps are mentioned over here. Like Kunal, how will you find our blogs to give us prizes? As you can see, keyboards and uh, headphones, Air Jordans. We get really creative. We give away all these amazing prizes. So do take part in it. It's free. You can win some exciting prizes and swag. And this month's prize, which is for August, you have 12 days remaining for Gaming Monitor. Please take part in it. It's very easy to write a blog. All you have to do is write on Hashnode and share with hashtag we make devs in the Hashnode and on your social media. And you can take part as many times as you want. And you have nothing to lose. In the end, you'll be just making and building your portfolio. So check it out. It's amazing. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, it's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Just have fun while you're doing it. And check out the links in the description below. And uh, if you have any questions, leave those in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next one. Have a great day.